All right, folks, welcome uh, to this episode of the Coffee Break podcast from LockDoc Security. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today, and I think we're going to have a really good conversation. Always. By way of... Are you, is your microphone working? Testing, testing. It's not work. working. What what happened? That's not good. I forgot my belt. Is it working now? We good? No, huh? it's not. How about that? Testing, testing. Oh. Oh. If I oh. unmute the right channel, it works very yeah. good. By way of introduction, <laughs> Levi Gray, how are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Not too much, Levi just a Gray. little bit. I'm customer service. I've got uh, some delicious coffee here. That's about it so wow. far this morning. In depth. Yeah. You said don't go too deep. So. I was I was merely wow. joking. Uh, oh. Lucas Ward, app developer, um, all hyped up on lattes. <laughs> Feeling good. He's already had his coffee, apparently. Oh, this is gonna be gonna be great. <laughs> um, so this is our fifteenth episode of the podcast. I am, uh, by the way, we we don't talk about it a lot. I don't think. But we are also, uh, we record this live every week. I'm trying to share it right now. We were having some issues with Facebook earlier. Um, but we, we record it live every week and uh, on Facebook at 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning. So we'd love to, to have you join us for that. Um, and it will really uh, be an engaging process. Today... Uh, joined by obviously Levi and Lucas and the conversation and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, I like to have I like to have these guys on the podcast but Levi um, is one of the thought leaders within our organization and um, is, is is one of the is one of the guys that I appreciate who helps to keep me sharp uh, we have conversations all the time and and Levi is the type of guy that you have to really you have to really be mindful of uh, of what your point is that you're trying to communicate, um, and and because if you're not, then you'll you'll tear it apart, right? Well, you know, probably. I mean, that's a not, yeah. that's a compliment. Yeah. Don't use any no. I, yeah, I, yeah, very intentional with thought, and uh, that's one of the things I always do. So you're intentional with thought. Sometimes to my own demise, but yes. But it it is it's a it's a good thing because. Um, one of the things that I like around this organization is that a lot of things are challenged, you know, because we want everything to be the best. We want everything to be in a state of improvement. And so it requires the norm to be challenged, the yes. status quo to be challenged. Yeah. Um, and so I like that. And so that's that's one of the things that whenever we get in these types of conversations, especially in this part, and it's really kind of the, the origin of how the podcast got started yeah. was a lot of these types of conversations. So um, it's really good to have you um, here today. And obviously, Lucas, as always, um, to, to join us as well, because there's a lot of thought. Now, I wanted to say something. Okay. We've got some ground ru rules today. Okay. No conversation about global warming. Oh, okay. No problem. All right. Dang it. We're going to stay on topic. What we've already discussed <laughs> with our core values, not yeah. We don't want rises. we don't want this conversation to get heated. It's already pretty hot. All right. <laughs> no, no bad puns today. <laughs> no bad puns. All right. So it is uh, again episode fifteen, um, and we're we're ready to get rolling. Today's conversation, and we started this conversation a couple of weeks ago. I think this is our third um, our third episode on core values because we have, I believe, eight of them is is what we've settled on mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, and so this is the third podcast that we've dedicated to that. Last week was a really great episode, by the way. If you missed it, uh, Josh Norris from Green Brothers Juice was in uh, in the studio and visited with us and talked about how um, their business got started and some of the cool things that they're working on over there. So, yeah, that's awesome. um, which we uh, we're all big fans of Green Brothers Juice. Everybody here is a, a frequent oh, yeah. frequent visitor of it. Frequent flyer. Frequent it's been flyer. a while, actually. Really? Yeah, I've been been craving the the A, B, and J. That's a good one. Which is almond butter and jelly. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> coffee today. Um, I'm drinking Americano. Looks like you've got the same over there. Yeah, Americano. Where's your co Where's your coffee, Lucas? I slammed it down because I was in dire need. That's, so it's gone. That's why it's so hyper right now. So check this out. Before we get into conversation, because I really want to stay on topic, but did you guys see this? Yeah, it looks like I was a, wondering uh, what it was, honestly. It's like one of those things you can mash cookies out of. 
to shape them like a Lock Doc logo. I thought <laughs> it was cutter. like a Christmas cookie. You cutter. thought it was a Christmas co- cookie? Yeah, it, it's a Christmas cookie. Um, it would probably hurt to eat it, but this is a 3D, uh, a 3D printed logo. That's awesome. Somebody used a 3D printer to make this. That's sweet. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna put it up here so everyone can see it. Is it gonna fall? Possibly. All right. So let's Maybe. let's get on to the topic of discussion today, which is uh, two of our core values that we have been discussing lately. Again, for context, um, we pitched this about uh, four weeks ago to our team. It's been something that uh, I was challenged on um, in, in part of a masterminds group, which is part of the Entree Leadership All Access community that um, I'm involved with. I actually had um, one of my masterminds calls last night. Um, and this was one of the things that I had set as a target or a strategic priority for our organization for the third and fourth quarter of 2018. I I had told them that I really wanted for this to be a thing that we had in place. And um, and one of the neat things about an organization like that or a group like that is that they hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of months ago, they said, what's your progress on this? And I was like, I haven't haven't even started yet um which was uh which was rough but um anyway so we started working through the process and uh and four or five weeks ago we started pitching these core values every wednesday morning during our team meeting we we take one aside and talk about it and and build on it so who who wants to take the first couple i i just want to say that i feel like any list of uh core values that you have will benefit from putting things like outrageous in front of them. And you could probably just put outrageous in front of all of them and it would <laughs> it would apply to our organization pretty good. So that's outrageous. It that is. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um the the first I wanted to, to go back to the beginning because yeah. it just for context because this, you know, some some folks are watching this live and they've seen it and they, they know some of this mm-hmm. may be their first episode. So what are what were the first uh, what's the first core value set expectations defined expectations yep um and we we wanted that to be number one so that that really kind of was the catalyst for the rest of the document number two was consistent communication consistent communication and we do that through uh regular team meetings we do that through uh, understanding how we document things uh through verbal visual and written um is this a quiz yes levi knows all the answers Mm. what's number three I don't remember. Trust? Was it trust? Cultivate trust? Outrageous trust. <laughs> Cultivate trust. Oh, where's the mute for his mute? <laughs> I don't know, right? Um, <laughs> Cultivate trust, and then the fourth was... Oh, man. <laughs> mm. Is the one that we're going to Defined talking. quality. Outrageous Or goodness. refined quality. Was refined quality, yes. And and I rearranged the order of it. Very good, Levi. You win. He's got version one still. Yeah, I, I rearranged the order of it. So um, I wanted to tackle two, two of them today, outrageous kindness and courageous honesty. And I paired those together because I thought that they, they, they were directly reflective yes. of each other. Um, and I also thought that it was very uh, ironic for those of you who are watching live. Obviously, you know this because it's the, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, but... If you're listening to this later on, then we're recording this the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So I thought that this kind of fell in line with, with that outrageous kindness and courageous honesty. So yes. let's set it up. Outrageous kindness. Uh, what, how, what are our thoughts on that? Our definition that we came up with is to treat our team members, our customers, and our families better than we want to be treated. Thoughts, um, discussions? For, for one, this is, although these core values are, are just now being listed, you know, all of these things are things that, that LockDoc has, has always been doing. And the, the outrageous kindness is, it can, it can kind of be off-putting at first because it's like, are these, are these people really this kind or is something going on here? Something, you know, strange. Mm. I don't know. It's, uh, it's really awesome that it'll work here because everyone is just, I don't know, they're, they're just outrageously kind. I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. And I think... Um it's kind of the the idea of outrageous kindness is to get them to ask that question like why are why are they so kind you know it's uh to to not not just do not just do something because it's beneficial for you you know not not even like your customer service yeah. which i work in every day not just not just being polite because it's your job and you can tell they're just kind of going through their talking points um but to the extent that they know that you actually care and, and then it 
then it doesn't make sense in the business world. And, and in that sense, it's outrageous. Um, that makes you stand out. And that not only that, but as they're asking that question, um, they're probably reflecting on their own kindness and like, how kind am I? It's really like an infectious thing. It's like a seed that Definitely. you're planting. And that's where the outrageous part comes out is if you're if you're doing it in a way that no one else can understand, you're kind of giving away that gift to someone else and causes them to think how they can do that to someone else. And it, it makes it a pleasure to come to work because yes. it's, it's never like, oh, there's that one guy that's super mean. You know, everyone's just really nice and uh, they go out of their way to do things. Well, yeah. and, and I would say to you, too, on that is is over the years, you know, we've obviously had a lot of uh, a lot of people in this organization and maybe some of them weren't always outrageously kind. Yeah. But I think that it's it sticks out. You know, yeah. and it's it's part of the culture that you're that yes. you're trying to to work on. So one of the things to to kind of uh, take a, a major rabbit trail off of this, and then we'll come back. Part of this whole concept, and and you guys have heard me talk about it for a lot. We went through this entire process for a couple of years about professionalism, and we we tiered out professionalism in our appearance, in our conduct, and in our. Um, communication mm -hmm. and the the real big thing that we we di dove into on each of those three categories was that we wanted to start internally the way that we communicated with each other professionally the way that we we dealt with each other professionally so that it carried out to our customers and so that it carried out to our vendors and so the concept coming back into the outrageous kindness is if as an organization we are showing outrageous kindness to each other internally mm -hmm it will naturally happen to our customers. So it's not that you're yeah. having to fake it to the customer yeah. and it will naturally happen to your vendors. Yes. And that's really what we want our organization to be known for is, yeah. is that, you know, you're going to come here and it's going to be a kind, you're not going to come in here and just be berated and because we don't want that to happen to our customers. Yeah. Years ago, uh, we were talking about the customer experience, customer service mm -hmm. experience. And one of the things that, uh, that you hit on, if you want to elaborate on it was how, how that customer experience starts internally yeah. with with the employees and goes out to the customers. Yeah, I mean, I think it even go. I mean, it, it even goes deeper than that. Um, just all of our actions in general, um, they're not external things, but they're internal things made external. So whatever you act on, it, you know, uh, if you act kindly, that's because you have kind thoughts uh that are coming out in your actions. And so it's all about that. The whole idea of culture is that, uh, you're, you're fostering, uh, not just kind actions. You're not trying to set up a list and say, you have to do these things, whether you like it or not, but we're fostering, uh, the attitude of kindness that will, you know, there's a proverb that says clean the inside of the cup and dish and the outside will be made clean. It's just an, it's a natural, your, your external actions and the way you do things. And that's so much easier and, and more efficient and more natural, um, than, than forcing someone to do something that you want them to do than simply to just be kind to them, develop in them a culture of kindness, yep. and then they will, they will just be kind. You don't even have to check up on them or anything it's like that. It's just a natural progression. Exactly. Excuse me. I was just having a conversation about that this morning is protecting that. Yeah. So if there are certain things in our organization that we like and that we want to continue, it's a matter of everybody to protect it. I've, I go so far as to say a lot of times is I don't like a lot of rules um, because rules oftentimes are something that people figure out loopholes or ways around or yeah. they'll find ways to, to hide when they when they don't follow them yep. and it require to have core values is to say this is how we want to operate and it requires everybody within the organization to to buy into those and to uphold them so uh, we can say that we want to have outrageous kindness in our organization in this com in this room here and walk out of here and punch somebody in the face yeah. and if somebody doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't do something about it then that you might as well just wipe that one off, yeah. you know? So it's yeah. it's that way with all of the core values. If it, it requires all of us to uphold them mm -hmm. to make sure that we can sustain it as an organization. Yeah. I think you, you could have also called it organic kindness so that it's, you know, it's kind of implies that it's 
it's something we believe in and not just something that we're we're trying to to program into the employees and mm. that's an interesting concept the the um the outrageous side of it is that it's above normal yeah that it's that it's abnormal kindness you know saying hi to somebody as you pass them in a hall is kind what is the next level of that give them a hundred dollars <laughs> Put some money in their pocket. <laughs> Ask them how their family is doing. Well, that's yeah. a, so it's a good point, yeah. but it's something that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Is outrageous kindness doesn't mean that you're giving everything away yeah, for yeah, free. Yeah. Sure. So, sure, it's kind to give somebody $100, but that's that's not the point of right, it. Showing right. kindness doesn't always mean that you're giving yeah. somebody. That's not organic. Yeah. So, yeah. outrageous is what is the next level of, of just being cordial? Cordial is saying hi and not mm-hmm. just looking the other way, yeah. right? So what's the next level of, of – I mean, how can you take that up a notch? Show compassion. Just say, you know, hey, how's 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 everything going? You know, uh, our, I know your wife was going through something. How's she doing with that? Is there anything we can do to help? Like, just be, just be there. Just be family. Be, you know, um, just show them that you're not just concerned with fulfilling some, you know, some required, like – Hello, how are you today? Yeah, and I just continue. checking a box. Yeah, even even something as small as when you say hi, how are you? Uh, don't just walk by them, but stop, look in their eyes, <laughs> smile. <laughs> hey, how's know. it going? And by the time they answer, you're you're already in the, <laughs> yeah. out the back door. Hey, hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, I'm great. Okay, he left. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. <laughs> so so, what are some ways that we can, or that we are, as an organization, or with each other, showing this outrageous kindness, and that it can spill out into our customers? Um. So so yeah, I think um, like it's, like we said, it's kind of a natural thing that flows outwardly. Like if we're kind to each other, yeah, then we're going to be kind to our customers, you know, but I think it's really just not just a culture of kindness, but I think it flows out. And you made a point of, you know, we're coming up on Thanksgiving yeah. holiday. Uh, it's really a, it's comes, kindness comes out of thankfulness. Um, and, you know, I have a four year old and uh, there's a lot of uh, impatience and uh, ungratefulness in our child. Uh, and I'll say that negatively it's yeah. in everyone, even me as an adult. Sure. And it's, and so as we're, as we're trying to teach her and guide her towards, um, towards being kind to others, it always ends up flowing out of the fact that she's ungrateful for something she has, or she's impatient about something. So it's really, instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have mm-hmm. and be thankful for that. And if you're thankful for, if I'm thankful to work with Lucas, I'm not going to be a jerk to him, you know? Um, if I'm thinking about all the stuff that Lucas didn't do for me that I asked him to do, then I'm going to be a jerk. Yeah. And the same thing with my customers. If I'm thankful that this customer is calling me to give me business, then I will be kind to them because I want, I naturally want to return that, that yeah. kindness. But, uh, if I think, Oh, another call coming in, I don't want to deal with anything else. And then I'm just going to be a jerk and I'm going to try to get him off the phone. So it's, it's all about the attitude of, are you thankful for what you have or are you not thankful for what you have? Which is comes down to perspective. Are you yep. th- are you thankful for what you have, or are you worried or or unhappy with the things that you don't? Yeah, and that's exactly what you're what you're talking about. Being mindful of that will then in turn allow you to show kindness to others because yep. you're not you're not sitting there going, "Well, must be nice," you know. <laughs> Lucas has got those really cool pants, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but hey, you know what? That's awesome yeah. that you got those really you know, cool pants. It's it's interesting. I'm not to really sure where the pants came from, but yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, it, it's interesting too that if if you go out into your workplace or into the world and you're kind to people, mm-hmm. you'll you'll start to notice a, a change in yourself as well. You'll you'll start to to feel maybe happier and more thankful. Yeah. And it's just you know you you get out you get you get back what you put out there, and um, I think that those those things kind of naturally build each other up. So. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, one thing I would add, uh, there was a book I was reading recently, um, but it talks about uh, goodness is its own reward. You know, we always think about, oh, well, why do good people suffer and bad people, you know, are rich and have all this money and stuff? Um, but the whole the whole idea of it is kind of skewed because we're looking at why something is good because of the benefit that comes out of it. So kindness isn't just uh, isn't just 
something we want to pursue because it it makes us more money because we get more customers but when like he was saying like it, it actually there's a harvest in and of itself of when we're good it, it comes back to us yeah. um may not, it may not even be monetary may not even be anything material that comes back to us mm -hmm. but there's something that we uh some reward we reap f simply from being kind to others um that that is its own reward it, it gives us the reward and when we're not kind we're robbing ourselves of that reward it's it's surprising too that even a small kindness with a, you know the, the world we live in even a small kindness it, it doesn't go unnoticed a, a lot of people if you just go a tiny little bit out of your way are like oh man this that's amazing thank you so much it's great yeah. and it's um or it's surprising to me at least because yeah. i uh, you know people are just they're very they're very thankful when you're kind and uh, yeah. if you you know make the extra effort to to try and brighten their day it's usually given back tenfold yeah it's true very true very true so falling from outrageous kindness over to courageous honesty which is uh, another core value that we outlined um, or I, that, w that we uh, documented into our, into our core value list is courageous honesty. Um, and courageous honesty we defined as handling the truth with courage early and often. Don't hide things, cover or keep things from your teammates or your customers, which is, uh, which is very interesting. So sometimes honesty and kindness battle each other but um, one of my favorite quotes regarding this topic um, is from Dave Ramsey with uh, Ramsey Solutions. He talks about to be unclear is to be unkind. Mm. So that's where some of these things kind of tie into each other is if we're not courageous enough to be honest and to, to handle those things, then we're being unkind. Yeah. So it's going to be hard to handle both of those core values simultaneously yep. if we're if we're if either one of them are failing right mm -hmm. so one of the things with this courageous honesty and, and some of the definition is talking about um, handling conflict yeah. you know or or when somebody is not uh, upholding the core values as you would want them to within the organization mm -hmm. how do you handle it um, and and who should you know how does that work mm -hmm. and and my perspective when it comes down to these core values is everybody should if we want to yeah. protect the uh, the integrity of our organization protect the integrity of our core values then it requires all of us to be mindful of it yeah. right um, if, if if you have kind of a, a gatekeeper that you know anytime someone messes up they have to go see this one person and it's you know this the situation that they're never comfortable with then it's it's going to be very difficult to kind of build up that um, courageous honesty. But if yeah. if everyone in the company feels comfortable talking with everyone else and talking with customers, and um, you know <coughs> if they're rewarded for for when they are honest, then it, it becomes much easier to kind of to say those things that maybe you don't want to say or to, yeah. uh, that maybe you're dreading telling your boss or your coworker. I, I want to give you a real example of this and and. Um, and, and it was impressed me, uh, and it's one of the reasons this, that this is in here, and it is written the way that it was. Several months ago, we had an, an issue where um, we had some product that was sitting on a shelf, and it literally fell. There was a bunch of things happening. It fell into a trash can inadvertently. <laughs> it, the trash can got emptied into another trash can, and then that trash can got emptied into the dumpster. We saw it all on camera three or four days later when we were trying to find the product. It was a very inadvertent, accidental thing. And it was it was one of those defining moments in, in a person in an organization, and I'm not naming any names of, of who, who did what because, because it's not about that. Here's the situation is when it came down to it, the person that, that discovered it and the person that, that had to handle it because they had to call a customer and let them know that th what had happened. No. And it was a defining moment. And I've seen this and I've heard this happen. I'm dealing with this in another situation right now with a, with a complete other vendor. But it really defined honesty because mm -hmm. at that moment they had to pick up the phone and call a customer. And they could have easily said, because nobody would have known any different, they could have easily said, yeah, um, we're waiting on additional parts uh, from the manufacturer or it got lost in shipping or 
whatever the case may be. They could have no. very easily passed yeah. the buck on somebody else. But I watched them pick up the phone and call and say, hey, this is what happened. It fell into a trash can, and it got tossed out. And I apologize. I've already done A, B, and C, and this is what's going to happen. And the response on the other end of the phone was, hey, man, it happens. You know, it what it was not the the angry response that that the person was anticipating yeah. it was a yeah hey it's happened yeah. you know, maybe not that exact situation but things like that have happened yeah. before and if you would have approached it in a sense of hey it was somebody else's fault somebody else lost it or whatever then it would have been an argument and a debate guaranteed yeah. and it could have come back and you know yeah been a, been a worse situation the uh, yeah. fib could have you know Maybe you forgot that that's what you had said the the reason it disappeared was, and they yeah. call back and they're like, "Hey, where's that part?" They're like, "That part fell in the trash can," and then yeah. it's like, now you're suddenly you know you've yeah. you're carrying around this you've, this you've white been line. dishonest, yes. Yeah. And uh, you know when you always when you're always honest, it, it gives you this feeling of you know relief because it's yeah. like, well, no one is gonna find out this you know thing that I made up or uh, you know. And it's just a, it's a, it's a better way to be. Yeah. And it, we, and the interesting thing is like other businesses aren't ever looking for someone who doesn't make mistakes, you know, maybe, maybe less mistakes than others or yep. something, but, but, uh, they're definitely looking for a company that's honest, you know, mm -hmm. that's, and, and, uh, there's just a general attitude of, we can't really trust anyone, you know? Yeah. But, um, so when you, when you have someone who, uh, makes a mistake, there may even be lashback for it because maybe yep. messes up a project or something like that. Um, which we, which you always want to come, not just saying, Hey, I made a mistake and then leave, but Hey, we made a mistake and this is how we want to fix it. But, um, but that's going to be an immediate reaction. Um, but in the long term, that company's going to see that this is, these people are honest. They yep. could have very well told us that, that, you know, something, a tornado hit and took out all the parts and, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> Something crazy, but anyway, so but they they could have very well lied about it and and then moved on. But they're honest, so so did that's going to create. Did you just make up a story about a tornado coming through. Yeah. Oh, don't forget it. Wait, you didn't see the tornado the other day. Anyway, so uh, derailing, but so the the long term effect there. Um, on the one hand, if if one is honest, is you may get some lashback at the beginning, yeah. but then you're going to uh, you know create a relationship of of trust. Yeah. Um, but the other side, if you were dishonest, you may even succeed at your dishonesty, um, and you know you've you fixed the issue for now, um, but but there's going to be more of a. Yeah distrust it's it's just the, the 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 best way to handle it is being honest I, we had a, yep. we had a customer in here a couple of months ago and one of the things that that he said to me was you know he was complimenting everybody in the organization of how how everything was working well and, and communication was well and all that but one of the things he said is it's hard very it, it's easy to find a service provider that can handle the perfections like mm. hey yeah we're awesome high five cool we did an awesome job but it is very difficult to ha to find a contractor or a service provider that can handle imperfections mm -hmm. well, um, and that's really I mean, the, if you're if you're running if you're running a service department if you're running any type of a business period I guess but especially in the service world there's going to be issues there are going yeah. to be imperfections there are going to be missed deadlines there's going to be you know damage done like that's just part of it you yeah. I mean you, it's it's unavoidable in a lot of situations. How you handle it is really a divider between the yeah. the 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 good and the bad companies. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's stuck with me. Like that that little statement, how you that's handle good. the imperfections, is makes a big difference. And that goes back to and and again plays right into courageous honesty yes. because it's how you're handling it. Do you go and make excuses and and place blame on everybody else, or do you handle it? take ownership for it and say this is what we're going to do to solve it yeah. you know that's that's really what people are people don't want to hear a blame game you yeah. know people don't want to hear that the weather and this and and there was back orders and all this stuff mm -hmm. like it's okay so what are you going to do you yeah. know i don't have a door or i don't have my car or yeah. whatever like are you going to get it fixed um, and so that's that's a very very uh a, a, a something that we have to all be mindful of yes. handling the truth 
and with courage early and often don't hide, hide things cover up or keep things from your teammates or customers and you know we we've run into these situations before where you know maybe something happens on a job site you you fix it and move on but the customer knows about it right and you just don't tell anybody like you just mm-hmm. keep that one in <laughs> keep that one under wraps it always comes up and then it blindsides somebody else you know hey so and so did this and what are you going to do about it type thing and it's like oh nobody knew about it you know yeah. and that's why we have that built in is that we don't want it to be covered up or kept things from our teammates or our customers or you know if you fix something because it's whatever and you don't let the customer know they're going to find out about it eventually it's just best practice to handle it with courage um and with honesty early and often so yeah. that's that's a huge thing again going back to that dave ramsey quote is to be unclear is to be unkind hmm. so if you're if you're not ha- if you don't have the ability to be uh courageous in your honesty then you're being unkind to your teammate and your customers yep. and if you if you kind of keep those those things in perspective it's hard it's really hard to reason with dishonesty yes all right very true um especially if you're trying to keep those core values yeah i, th- yeah. I think somebody that is going to just make up excuses over and over again they're they're really trying to make the other party feel empathetic for their situation like hey we messed up yeah you know here's my thousand list of excuses but if the person making the excuses would simply feel empathetic for the person they're providing the excuses to they would realize that hey it's like we don't really care what happened we just want to know how it's going to be fixed sure and, um, mm-hmm. so it's you know it, it's all about putting yourself in in the other person's shoes most definitely great conversation guys uh, our time has kind of come to a close i really really appreciate it uh, lucas ward is our app developer i, th- I think i saw some of your, your systems system developer systems engineer I don't know, my what job titles call? change like three I, times I, I feel like every time we have a conversation that your job title changes is that me do i do that yes oh okay and then <laughs> levi uh, handles our customer service basically responsible for except for the times that he's in here chatting with us responsible for a majority of the phone calls and emails uh online chats and all that so really appreciate you guys input today and feedback and conversation it's been really on, uh really awesome uh, i want to continue this conversation and continue to work through the remainder of our core values which we have uh what another three that we need to to discuss at some point as we get for, move forward um again this is our 15th episode of our podcast so there's many more out there 14 actually uh, that you could go listen to some great guests um, that uh, we've had some really really exciting guests in here and a lot of great conversation look forward to many more of these Um, we've got some some really fun guests lined up in the next couple of weeks and months Um, so more to come on that very very soon but in the meantime uh, we appreciate you joining us today for the live recording we appreciate you for listening Um, you can connect with us more online at lockdoc.net slash connect, L-O-C-D-O-C dot net slash connect. Lucas is actually working through final stages of our brand new website. That uh, if you if you haven't yet, you should go check out our website because it may be live. The no, new version. No, not yet. It may be. Oh, when this launches? Maybe. Well, if so, if you go, to, <laughs> <laughs> pressure's on. <alive. laughs> if, if you go, if you go there and it's not, then it's Lucas's fault. Then come back the next oh. day and try again. I can't it, launch it until my job title is web designer. So courageous okay. honesty, Lucas. We, <laughs> we can put we can put several several slashes in your, in your right. title. Um, but anyway, so check that out. Um, there's lots of good information there. Lockdoc.net slash podcast will give you all of the podcasts that we have, and of course, you can follow us through all of the social media platforms. Just search for Lockdoc Security, um, and we'll be happy. You know what's interesting that I forgot to talk about? Um, this is completely off track, but um, if you haven't seen it yet, you can go to um, our, in, our Facebook page, probably Instagram and our website. But um, we there was a news story that we were on uh, that aired on Friday night here locally oh, yes. uh, talking about ways to protect your home from uh, forced entries, from kick-ins. 
um, which was a really, really cool honor to be able to participate in that. Um, I was, it was one of those things where when, when, the, when they contacted us, I was like, is this real? You know? <laughs> and then you want us to kick in a door. Yeah. You want us to come kick in a door and tell you how to fix it, you know? Um, and then from there it was like, well, is it actually going to air? And then it finally did. So that was really cool. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out, um, on, on all of our social media. Resident platforms. Awesome. Karate specialist, Josh Smith with yeah. the, the kicks. Mm-hmm. It was it was crazy. We talked about it a lot. We you know we've seen this before. We've dealt with and we've done reinforcement, but we have never kicked in a door. That's just not really part of what we do. You know, <laughs> it should be. We're the, we're there to repair <laughs> and and to protect, not to to be the forced entry person. <laughs> so when we watched him do it and how quick it happened, it, mm. with one kick, I mean it it surprised Josh. It surprised all of us. We were just like. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Anyways, you should go check it out. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool deal there, and uh, that's all on on all of our social media. We've got to wrap things up. Uh, appreciate your time today. We'll see you next time on the next episode of Coffee Break with Lock Doc Security. <laughs>